has made a great decision. Great teammates, coaches, and other people who want to be Super Bowl champions. And we are. We're going to do it this year. And we're going places because we want to go places. Touchdown, Detroit Lions! Before long, where they're going to be the last one standing. Touchdown! Uh -huh. Biden done. And you got what? Nine and eight. That's not crazy. Swift gonna Pro Bowl this year. Lock it in. So touchdown Detroit Lions. Eight flowers for a third round pick. No, you're tripping. The gut punches will stop. Yo, welcome back to the last second dose. What are we doing the most here? It's your boy Rad, baby. Y'all already know. I'm big repping the Detroit Lions. Y'all know where I'd be. Out here on the West Coast, the best coast. Anyways, we about to get it pumping and jumping. I got mixed stats. Are you ready? I'm You're, ready, Rad. Are, are, are you ready? ready? Like this I'm ready. Are you ready? No, because I just had are a great you, idea. I just, I just had a great idea. Can I get the clap? Dose of Dion. There he is. What's happening? He ready. Good Come Lord. On. Chad, are where we focused? at? You focus. I'm ready. I'm fo well, sort of. I just had a great idea when you were talking there. You oh had that good gosh. narration voice. Right here's what I was thinking. I need to throw someone on the screen while you break it down. Some kind of overlay. So I was like, all right, what do I got? So when you talk, I can throw something like boom. And you're like, okay. okay. Yeah. And I'm just talking, ready to go. Getting yeah. everybody ready because we're about to have a live show. Mm. Yeah. Throw Ooh. something else up. Hold on. Okay, Hold on. Okay, Hold on. okay. You break it down. Me. Break it down for us then. But boom. Green screen. Yes, sir. Bang. All right. That's fire. That's fire. Oh, take your head <laughs> off. Where you at, Red? <laughs> if you need, I'm over here. Man, bring yo. Let's get it, baby. Let's yeah, go. Gonna, let's just do the show like this. Right, get you just saw a voice. No, you can see me. Hello, I don't know which way to lean. Oh, this way, maybe. No, nah, you can't get me in there, Bobby. That's it. So, today, mm -hmm. um, right, what do you, mean? you know, give us your thoughts. Give me your thoughts, right? What do you think? You can see my hands, spirit fingers here. <laughs> okay, that's not the move. Let's go, doggy. Let's All get right, it pumping. Man. Yeah, oh, I forgot we had this. All right, but anyway, yeah, man, we got some good stuff today. Well, of course, John Penasini, y'all saw the title. Rad texted me afterwards because he thought I was talking about Josh Pascal. Oh, uh, that's man. my fault. I should have clarified there. That would have been a huge Lord. loss. But let's not Lord. understate the loss of Mr. John <laughs> Penasini, Brad. This is a legend uh, in his own way. I, I, I was, you, I know me and you were big fans of John Penasini. For sure. You know, the amount of, uh, you know, just the jokes and stuff we could have with Pen, it was great. So. You know, it's unfortunate that he retired. We're going to talk about what now, because there is, it is a loss. I think it's I think it's more than some of these other retirements that you have. And it's like, all right, yeah, he probably wasn't going to make the team, or we haven't seen him here. But this guy we have seen, so we know what he's about. So there is mm -hmm. a hole that we have to fill. Uh, also, offensive line rankings came out. Rad for PFF. You know, they're right. showing us some love, Rad. They really we are. Better, so we're gonna, I know we better be in the top ten. Well, we might be. We might not be though. We might not be. That's why I need to show you because I need your reaction for it because it may not be that great. And I need Let's you to break it in. down and be like, "What's what is this?" You know? I'd like to see this. Yeah, yeah, I'd like do to that. see this. As y'all see the bottom, uh, the Patreon link is in the description. I've I've never had it in there. I, I mean, I do on videos, but I don't have it on live streams. Fix that, bam, it's in there. Uh, because me and Rad, the goal is every week piece of content's gonna be out there. However, it is maybe, maybe it's just a video. I don't know. Something's going up there, so that's the move forward. Something. Something, something will, will appear. Absolutely. Something will be up there. That's the plan. Something. So there you go. You want a little extra? Bam. There you go. Just like. Let's go, Lion. Let's, Let's go. go. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I started clapping. I just this felt is... like it, I needed to clap right there. You did. Hey, Mondi Gaming's feeling it. He's feeling it. He said, let's get it. Shout out to Vondi Gaming for the five, man. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? Man, Chad popping early. I see Dwayne in the building. We got, we got. I got my girl Mike in the building. 
He says, what's hey. up, my G's? Uh, we got... Hey, what's happening, Mike? Here, here's Johnny in the building. Brad, rate that movie. One through ten. Go. All right. Cool. Uh, the we Shining. Got, yeah. Ten. <laughs> oh, snap. We got Giovanni. We got Johnny. He was in here first. The Niners. The Niners fan. I love it. Uh, the best name in sports retired. I read this. Didn't know what he was talking about. I don't know if he's talking about Washington football team or what. Did you? Was there a team retired? Team's name retired? I don't know. I shouldn't have put you on it. That's my fault. Uh, hey, we'll get to 53 soon. We're going to do those uh, soon. We're going to start breaking those down. Um, Hold on real quick. Shout out to Fabian, man. He from Switzerland. Yeah, you just read what I read. Yeah. Shout out to Fabian, yeah. bro. Yeah. Switzerland, that's huh? That's a fire name, too. I see with the big F as the logo. And now you need to change that. You need a picture in there because it's weird. It's just an F. But I was all right. You probably just What's made it or something. Man, all right, Rev, let's do this. What you want to you tell break, me? Break down the news, man. You, you, you tell, tell them the news. Tell them what went I, down. I'm going to break down the news. Like, I, I'm yeah. at work. I get a text message on my Apple Watch. Yeah. JP retired with crying emojis. I'm like, JP, like. <laughs> Josh Pascal, like, hold on, bro. He ain't even signed his rookie deal, and he already retired. Like, and I'm at work, just like all these thoughts is going through my head. Like, man, I hope this wasn't just like a waste of second round pick. We always dud in the second rounds. Nine times out of ten, we dud. We end up drafting the guy that everybody's high on, and he don't even oh. make it to the to the practice field. Yeah. And I get a text message. No, no, I'm not about to hold I, I'm up. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I, I need to apologize to John here. I always see him in my chat and for some reason. For, I was like, the uh, uh, 49ers thing. My bad. I'm sorry. Shout out to John. Don't know why I said that. Go ahead, Brad. I'm sorry. No, it's more of you need to text better. You don't just send JP retired. Hey, that's yeah, what, I thought like, that, 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 that you knew that that meant, time down, You need to do a better time, better, better with your fingers and your words. Okay. Your words are terrible. You don't just text somebody while they at work, JP retired. Because if if it was Josh Pascal, I would have went eight. You know what I mean? I'd have had to take a break or something. Go sit on the toilet. Think about it. Like, man, this is some bull. But it's really you. You need to just get better when you're texting me. Plain and simple. Now, I think it's a huge loss to the squad. I'm not going to lie. I know he was a rotational defensive tackle, backup nose. He was really stuck at just that pure nose tackle yeah. position. But I thought he was solid at what he did. He was good at holding the point of attack. For the most time, most of the time, he was good at just disengaging with that offensive lineman and some point getting into the play. He didn't bring much of a pass rush for the team or anything like that or versatility. But I, we knew what we were getting out of John Tennessee, and that's what I liked about him. He was always going to play hard, short, stocky, big bat, a big body, fat daddy who's going to hold the point of attack. And what we have on the roster right now, I think it's – it's somewhat of a hole because who can replace him? Yeah. Yeah, we're about to talk about that. So you asked me before we got on, why did he retire? I would like to know because I don't know. Was it a broken toe? Yeah, it's a good question. I don't know. I mean, the injury that everybody know. knows about was the shoulder. We know that he had the shoulder issue he was dealing with in 2020. Uh, he played through it, though. Like, that's the thing. Penasini didn't take any time off. Like you said, he played through it. He had the shoulder issue. He had that little patch, like the little bandage thing on mm-hmm. going on there. And he wasn't even using it. What did he it. have on? What did he have the on? Bandage. The, pand- the bandage. Whatever a bandage is. He had that. That's what he Why was doing. Why like that? He was, a- <laughs> he was intense with that. Go ahead, man. Like, what the? the- but- <laughs> he was, he was dealing with it that. over here. He what played is going through on? it. And Murray came back because he had surgery, and Campbell was excited. He was like, look, he's going to be back. You know, he's now he's using his arm. He's lifting again in the upper body, which he wasn't doing with the injury. But then he retired. It's weird because maybe you would think that would be something that's like, oh, after the surgery, he retired because he didn't, you know, it's just like, I don't want to deal with this. Or maybe mm-hmm. I'm thinking if it has anything to do with that, because that's the only injury I think we know about, is that you have that, you play through it again. You know, obviously his role was smaller. And it's just like, man, you know what? I don't want to deal with this for ever you know because it's probably not going to get better and Mm -hmm. it's probably going to be long term it could be a long term issue with him and i don't want to be like that you know what is he 24 years old 25 he's super young i made some money i was a high you know i was a draft pick so i got my money i don't want to deal with that i want to be able to lift stuff when i'm 26 years old you know i don't want to deal with that so i i feel like maybe that was part of that was had something to do with it uh and maybe that also put his decision together where he's like you know what i don't want to uh I don't want to go through that. So tying the injury, which is not wanting to go through that punishment every day. And he's like, I'm, I'm not, I don't love it. 
so he retired. I don't know. That's my thoughts. I haven't heard anything else. Did you hear anything else? No. I haven't heard anything Brad, else. Brad, hold up. Why do you give me the dang stare, man? That's freaky. When, when, I'm, when I'm just about I'm, to ask I'm, you I'm, a question. I'm, okay. I'm listening, bro. I'm like locked in. I just think it's a kind of a loss for the squad, bro. Like, we had it a young a core loss. defensive line that was going to build together. He was a part of that young core. I would thought he would possibly would be deserving of a second contract. Cause I like what he, I like what he did. He didn't do much, but what he did was solid. You know what I mean? And I knew we weren't gonna have to overpay for him. Now I got a couple names that comes to mind that I think we should go out and probably snag to Ooh. fill just that nose position. What's the who for? What are, well, let, let, let's uh, let's talk about that real, real quick before you go into who we should get. What are we losing here? I'm gonna throw some numbers, and then I want you to just talk about what you feel like we're losing on the field. Cause go. this was a guy that in 2020 played a lot. You know, he was one of the draft picks, part of the replacements of Snacks Harrison with the Danny Shetlands. He actually played more than Danny Shetland, I realized, in 2020. The guy played 576 snaps. Towards the end of the year, he became basically a starter on the defense. This past year, cut that by 300, he played 276 snaps. His role was way less, mm -hmm. but he still was impactful. Like you said, he wasn't super versatile outside of playing nose. He was out there on early downs. He gave you some push a little bit on early downs, but he wasn't going to play past downs. So right. you are having a guy that was – like I mean, we know he was drafted for a different regime, and it's like slowly you're kind of moving on from all those guys. And it always happens like that. But Nick Williams is gone. Trey Flowers is gone. John Penasini is gone. Jamie Collins is gone. I was watching the Packers game. I forgot we had Jamie Collins. I'm like, oh, shoot, yeah, we had that guy. You know, all these guys moving on. Now, I hate to see it like this because Jay Sean Cornell is still here, and I think John Penasini showed the ability to adapt where it was like, let me – you know, my role is going to be smaller, but I can at least carve out something here that you don't have. So Lions are losing that within Penasini. Talk about what you think they're losing in Penasini, and then maybe uh, you know what guys are talking about that you'd be interested in. You 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 hit on it. Feel that, yeah. We're we're losing a, a pure, true nose tackle, a big body, somebody who can come in on when it's inside the five and things like that. And I don't know on the current roster we have somebody who can replace that backup nose. I know Twinkle Toes McNeil is our starting nose D tackle. But I can't see Brockers holding a point of attack at the nose and Levi and uh, Josh Pascal. All we have right now is McNeil. I think it's a it's a it's a solid loss. I'm not gonna say it's like a big loss losing him, but it, it it's impactful for sure. And guys I want to go out there and get you actually said one of his names. I'd go out and bring back Danny Shelton. I thought Danny Shelton played some good football for the year he was here with us. Yeah. And up, up until injury. We need a we need just a big strong Is Shelton a free agent? Guy. Yeah, Danny Shelton's out there. Wow, he's young. Danny Shelton's still out there. Even a guy like Star Latui. I'm thinking of just like just pure noses. That's can that okay. can replicate what John Penicini brought to the squad. And that's what we need. Right. I mean, if he has a little bit more versatility, yes. But I need so I, I need a, a big body, a fat daddy, because I feel like we have a lot of three techniques, five techniques, things like that. We need. I feel like we need just a true solid nose, and a guy like Danny Shelton comes to mind. Could get him for the cheap. Star Latui, even uh, what is it, Linval Joseph? I would love to bring Sue back, but Sue's not. He's not that. I don't. I, he's not a nose. I don't consider no. Sue a nose. So Sue's a three technique. Not saying he couldn't play it. But we need some fat daddy that we can get in there. Big Brandon Williams, actually, from uh, the Baltimore Ravens. There's another guy. And I think we might need a little another veteran on the defensive line just to continue to help the growth of these youngins. I mean, we got Brockers. Charles, Charles Harris, I would say, is low-key a vet and things like that. But that's what we need. We need some fat daddy. Yeah, I mean – to your point, I feel like, you know, we know we took a lean. They said that that's the only pure nose that's left on the board, so let's go get that right. guy. So they did like that to have that piece. Even though it's different now, they like to have that piece. McNeil's, what, 330? Yeah, he's probably in that range. I think coming out, he was listed at 320. Oh. <laughs> I, I think coming out, he's probably listed about like 320. But, but McNeil's also on the shorter side, too, so he's a little more, you know, stout, I feel like, for that mm -hmm. position. Now, Michael Brockers, you brought up Michael Brockers. The issue with Brockers is his height. I think a big part of it, he's long, but he's also very tall for that position. However, yes. 
I think right now, if you kept the roster as it was, Michael Brockers is the guy that you would mix in to get uh, Lee McNeil some you know rest or whatever. Because sure. we did yeah. see Brockers do it a little bit last year, and he can do it on early downs. And I do think with the, the that's not like, where he's best suited, though, man. I don't, I don't know. I, don't, I, th- I think he I might be best Brockers suited there. I, th- I might be great. I, I think Brockers I think he might be best knows. there. I, don't I think want it might be his playing, best spot. Though. Here's what I I'm really thinking, know. though. You're, you're, let me let me say this, okay? I don't like it. You had, I don't like it. You you had the L.A. Rams when uh, Brian Holmes came from there, 2020. Their nose tackles, you know, their guys was uh, Sebastian Joseph Day. They had the Greg Gaines, you know, the three tens, just over six foot. So you look at like a Demetrius Taylor. You're like, all right, maybe if he puts on 15 pounds, he could be that guy. You know, when you look at his height, even though he played DN in college, Jayshon Cornell, he's under 300 pounds. He's probably more of a defensive tackle. Well, they already said he wants to only play three. Like, three technique is where he's at. And that makes and sense. And then, buddy, right? you just named. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't want him to – like, he's good at being a three technique and exploding off the ball. So, putting weight on him, he's losing his strengths at that point, what he brings to the table just because we're trying to force him to play nose. I think we need to go get a veteran who's already proven that they can play in this league. Get him for the low, and there you go. Man, and Brockers the, does not need to be playing nose, bro. That's not his. I think, I think that he ain't, will be. That, man. I think he, he, he <laughs> might, but that's not his strong suit. His strong suit, honestly, is like playing that five technique, three technique. I don't really want him to. I don't think he should play the nose, man. That's not. That's not his. I think we should go get big Brandon Williams from Baltimore, or you go get bring back Danny Shelton. You need Star Latouille. You just need somebody who's a big body who can hold the point of the tap. And they ain't even got to be well, expensive. We, they out here for reasons, and you play nose. Nose tackles don't get paid a lot, so we can go get him for the low ski boski Instead no, of don't. forcing Brockers to play D tackle, that's not his dizzle. He ain't no D tackle. But, Red, if we get no D- he's not a nose. I'm sorry. If we, get a, if, we get a, if we get a nose, they're going to want someone that's – that yeah, I, I'm with you. I'm I'm cool with adding one because I don't think we have a guy on the roster that sticks out. So I'm saying the only one that makes sense is maybe Brockers. You know, there's no one else on the roster that has that build that a Lee McNeil does or that John Penasini does. But we know that Danny Shelton's and guys like that they don't have the explosiveness, and that's why he's been in the teams that he's been and why he doesn't get paid because he's not explosive. And they're just like yeah, he's just gonna sit there and take double team blocks. That's why John he's Tennessee a free agent. Wasn't explosive, though. I wouldn't say yeah, I know, John see, Tennessee wasn't but, explosive. But also, that's why we he's see him starting to lose role. That's why he lost role. That's why he played only 270 snaps, and it was going like this for John Penasini. Because, Red, I was with you. I thought he'd be the backup, too. But at the same time, without having flexibility, it was like, well, could he be a guy that's moved on from? I mean, there, there, maybe. You know, is this a guy that doesn't actually end up making the team? I thought he would because – to what you're saying, we don't have a backup nose. So maybe they do want a guy just like that to put on the roster. But would they keep a guy like that? You know, because when you start getting down to, I think when you get down to start to get down to this bottom, you're like, who do we keep? They're going to keep someone with flexibility, I think, over someone like that. And as long as the guy, uh, like Brockers is going to be limited if you ask him that role. You can't ask him to hold double teams. He's going to struggle with that. Ali McNeil can. So I get what you're saying. I just feel like they're going to, if they're going to bring someone in and take that role, he's going to have to show some versatility, man, or they won't sign him. And he won't make the team. I, I get what you're saying, but at the end of the day, it's got to. I, I don't really care if you have versatility, and I don't. I wouldn't even look for that because at this point, say we bring in Danny Shelton, he has no versatility. He's a nose, but mm-hmm. every other interior D lineman we have on the roster has versatility. But is so he making like, the team over one of those guys with the versatility? With the line, I think so. He, so, so right now, the interior fellas, I'm saying Levi's making it, McNeil's making it. Cornell? Brockers. Rogers. I could see Cornell making it. Um, buddy from Appalachia State, he'll probably be on the practice squad. Okay. Who else? Did I say Josh Pascal? We count him as an Pascal interior. Th- yeah, I, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Pascal. So there's five. Pascal's going to be am I miss- I know. Um. So am I missing somebody? <laughs> um. You have Bruce Hector. You have Bruce Hector is the only guy I think that stands out here. Let me check, make sure. I think it's just. And Bruce I like Hector Bruce Hector. He bought last preseason. Yeah, but is he a nose? He just barely played last. He only played like fifty snaps. I mean, maybe it's still a transition for him because I don't think he's that. You know, he's closer in terms of build of what you're looking for. 
but he hasn't been that. So they, so there you go. You got four, maybe five. You count Pascal and then mix. A the nose tackle, having range. a good nose is key. I know they don't get paid a lot because they don't bring much right. far as like pass rush, but stopping the run, if you got a good nose that can take on two offensive linemen and keep a linebacker free, that's huge on stopping the run, obviously. Yeah. So putting some cupcake right there at the one technique, you're going to look up, he's going to be in the linebacker's lap. Hey, yeah. When, when the play starts, like we don't need him in the linebacker's lap. We need you standing there and holding the point of attack. So that's, that's, the, I, I, that's the biggest issue for Brockers is his height. Because if you put Brockers at one, because we know in so, even in some of these 4-3 fronts, like he's a guy that's tasked with two gaps. Sometimes it's the nose. And it's like you still have to take on that double team block for it, for it to line up for every gap. And if you're asking Brockers to do that, he's probably going to struggle to your point. Now, if you're at, if Brockers playing a zone run, if he's always shooting one, then it's like, all right, he can be there. But if right. you're going to ask him to venture outside of that, then your only guy on the roster is Ali McNeil that has a good build for it because – I think of the height factor, like the great gains, the Joseph days are on the shorter side. They can plug in and sit down in there. So I think mm -hmm. you make a good point, man. They might look to do it. At least bring, I would say at least bring in uh, maybe a UDFA or somebody to just compete. I mean, you got the roster spot open. Now, does that mean he makes the team? It doesn't have to because maybe at training camp someone emerges and there's like, ah, oh, we can't keep him over this guy. But I'd bring someone in for camp. Just to what about an Eddie Goldman from Chicago? See now, now you see here's here's what you do, right? Now you start to talk about the these older, expensive guys. You know what I'm saying? They're not, I don't think I don't. Gonna they're be not expensive. healthy. I don't. No, nah, I don't think I want that. Free agency in June for a reason. <laughs> Just like your boy Trey Flowers is still in free agency for a reason. They not gonna be expensive. Yes, but they're also there because they're not healthy. <laughs> I don't want a guy that's no. not healthy. That's why they're there, yeah. Red. Right? Did Trey Flowers play six yeah. games? Like <laughs> He could become healthy. If you're not playing a lot of steps, all you're doing is there to spell Aline McNeil for a couple plays. I think you can handle that and you can the chance of you getting hurt is gonna shrink because you're not on the field as much. I, I just want a cheapo depot that can hold up against two blo two blockers. That's it, bro. Like I'm not really asking you to come in and do much more. We we don't need you for pass rush. We got interior pass rushes, we got versatility along the D line. I just need a fat daddy that's gonna take on a center and a guard. And hold his point of attack. That's it. I'm not mad at that. I get where you're coming from. And I don't just need you to be out there balling. Just come in and fill yeah. Penasini's void. That's what Penasini did. That's it. That's all we need from you. That's it. Here. And we don't like. I don't need a killer. If they you just have out to be, be a killer. Great, but I just need yeah. you to do one job. Take on two no, lines for sure. And they just have to be willing to keep that guy over someone else. That will be the tough part for them. But I'm not mad yeah. at it because it is something that we don't have on the roster. Now, someone asked, can John Kaminsky into that? I don't think so. He's like 270. Hell Kaminsky's no, put no. on a lot of weight, you know? Mm -hmm. But again, it comes back to what you're going to be asking of the guy. If you ever ask them the two gap, Kaminsky's going to be killed in there. It'd be like, yeah, we just can't have him out there. And what happens when, if Ali McNeil doesn't play for a game? Now you just can't do that at all. He don't play for a game. We hurt him. But if they don't do anything, I believe it will be Michael Brockers that they're like, all right, he can back up. And I, I, get that. I get what you're saying yeah. for sure. If, it, if all fails, Brockers will play the nose. And I'm still scared about that. He's too tall. I mean, I just, I mean, I mean, leverage. Football's a game of leverage. Yeah. And if you're already 6'4", six, 6'5", six, you got a good chance of getting blown off the ball. So, I don't know, man. Uh, that's that's not that's gonna not looking good. Because at that well, point, if I find out Michael Brockers is our nose tackle and I'm the opposing team, I'm just going to run straight up the A-gaps. Brockers ain't bad, but Brockers is not a nose. That's not where he's best suited. He, he could be. He could be. He could be. Depending on his role. Those, you're smoking. He could be. I'm just saying. I think he could. No, but Chad's making a good point here. They're all cut. He's 30 some years old. He's not getting any stronger. It's like the he doesn't dude, need to get any stronger. He just needs to I be like in the right Brockers. role. He, he ain't a nose. He's not your normal nose. He's not He's, he's not, not your a Patriot nose. nose. He is in certain, he's not a nose. in certain roles. He's not a one technique. He could be. Okay. If, if it panned out like that, I'm going to point it out. I'm like, I told you, Brockers is not a damn nose. I told you this. Look at him getting just blown off the ball. The dude ain't built to be taking on double teams. Watch. I'm saying if he – if he, you, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If he's asked to take double teams, he will have problems. But he's going to have to. They he's don't know – you may not have to. You may not have to depending on their bro, alignment. If you're, if you're you playing the to. one, if you're playing the one technique, <laughs> you're going to get double teams. A hundred percent. Is he can be double team as long as he's 
shooting down what? Hill. If he's sitting and squatting and waiting, he can't. He will be killed. Bruh. I'm, I'm, you're not gonna, you're not gonna flip me on this. I hey, know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It, it I think it's a good. Happen. I think he could do it. I think we saw last year he could do it. I'd rather put. I'd rather bring back Indomic and Sue and have him play the one technique instead of Michael oh, Brock. Hey, first off, hold Sue's up. stronger. He fires off the ball harder. No, he doesn't. Sue's just a better player. Sue's going, better than Brocker. I I go with that. I can't go with that. Now, 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 you, now I'm about to play you now tripping, clip, Brad. Now, now you're, you're being crazy. Now wait you're being minute, crazy. Wait a minute. You said I he wanna, wanna... off the ball better? Brad, come then on, Brockers man. Then Brockers 100% no, of the time? No, I can't go. What? I can't go. Who? I can't go. So, oh, who's better, Sue or Brockers? Depends. All right, man. You know what? It depends what we're I'm not, asking. Brad, we're look, not you... off, We're not getting on the right foot today. <laughs> I, we're not. We're not. We're not getting off on the right foot today. You're tripping big time. I'm not tripping. I told you what's the case, Brad. I'm telling I know you, right? two of like Detroit Lions right. or nothing like no, that. Oh, he's a good player. He's a good player, and he's still better than Brockers right now. Hey, he might be. I don't, I don't know. Oh, no, you're tripping. Dog. It depends you're what tripping. we ask him to do, Red. It depends what we you're ask tripping. him to do. No, I'm you're not tripping. I'm telling trip. you, Red. Look, look. No, no. He was I don't not. Even know if I want to continue this. <laughs> he like Levi. Like all of our defensive linemen was not playing to their strengths last year. Brockers is a extremely explosive defensive lineman, which we saw last season. In spurts, we just didn't see it consistently because of what they asked of him. Brockers is cool, and Brockers, Brockers tell you is what Brockers good. Is he's cool. a very good run Brockers, defender. If he's I like Brockers. To play the right way, yeah. I like Brockers. I'm not sitting here saying Brockers is a bad player. I would like to retain him. I want him. I don't want him to get cut this year. But you're not going to tell me he's better than Sue. Hey, I don't and, know. I don't and know Brockers, about Sue. Brockers right is now. the type of defensive lineman where he needs other pieces around him for him to shine. Like if you get him the single matchup, like yeah, he can continue to make some plays. But at the end of the day, Brockers. Also had Aaron Donald next to him, so I feel like sure. that kind of elevated Brockers' Absolutely. play a little bit. So let's be real. I'm like, yeah, Sue, I completely agree. Sue elevates people around him. Does he, Red? I play. don't know, Red. At, but at this point in time, I'm not going to say he really does that. But back in the day, we know. Sue, oh no, no, I, I ain't talking about old Sue. Old Sue was a dog. I, I, Red. Still, I still feel like you have to account for Sue. You, you still need account. to find out where number ninety or number ninety-three is. Now, see, but we talking two different things okay, here. We talking two right different here. things. We talking run defensive they, pass rush. I'm not arguing. I think, Brock I think, Sue's, better, I think Sue's better than both than both of them at that. Not not run defense. He ain't. You know what? Nah, I'm wait, wait. Disagree. I'm just gonna agree. Really? To disagree. You think he's a better run defender than Brock? Oh, okay. He's, he's, a, he's a better. Sue's a better player than Brockers, and I like Michael Brockers. I'm not here knocking Michael Brockers. I hope it's he's it. on our team. I think he's good for our team. He's good for the field and locker room. But Sue is better than Brockers. I don't want to see Brockers playing nose tackle because that's not his game. That's not his strength. I'm I'll telling you, if it, if it happens, he's going to get blown off the ball, especially when it comes to double teams. Now, if he has a one-on-one -on -one matchup, it, he, did it yeah, last year. he has a good chance. He wasn't taking on a lot of double teams. That's what I'm saying. He has to avoid the taking on the double teams because he can't sit and hold it. But then again, I wonder if not if Sue could do that. I wonder. I don't know. I haven't watched enough Sue, but I his I don't know. He has the build for it, so I would assume he could. I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't, I haven't watched Sue. Like if I'm being real, I have seen one game of Donick and Sue over the past season, and it was him against the Rams. That's the only game I've seen. And I'm not gonna argue that Sue is is not a better pass rusher. I would, without seeing more than one game, I would say yes, he's a much better pass rusher than Brockers is. The situation, he's a much better Brad, player. Situationally, Brad, I'd rather he's have Brockers against the run. He's a much better player. I'm taking Sue ten out of ten times over. If 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 they say you have Brockers, right, I don't care right. what type of play it is. Okay. You're not gonna. I don't care all what right. type of play it is. I'm taking <laughs> Sue ten out of ten times over Brockers, and I like okay. Brockers. I'm not here knocking him. But Sue is a better player, a hundred percent. I don't care if he did his dirty by is, going is to Sue, Miami. Is Sue None a free of that. They both owe. He's a free agent. They both owe. Their Tampa's not bringing Sue back because they just signed uh, Hakeem Hicks, so they filled that void. So do you think so Sue's still out there? Will he be signed? Sue Sue's gonna find a job. Okay. Like, come on, bro. Well, maybe he's he gonna go to a championship here. caliber team. I can see Sue probably going to like then Kansas. He definitely City. would come over here. I would love for Sue to come back. Don't come here trying to ask for no $10 million a year or nothing hey, like that. Man, but, I mean, it's a one-year deal, so really I don't care. I would love to bring Sue back. Sue's one of my favorite Detroit Lions of all time. I think Sue's also a future Hall of Famer. I, I, yeah, he probably is, yeah. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say first ballot. I haven't seen Sue since, since Detroit. Stu, Sue is still disruptive. He's, no, he, he's not the, the Sue of the Detroit Lions where he was just that cold-blooded beast. You know what I'm saying? But 
Sue still can put up some good film, and you still have to account for Sue. And for you to say you would take Michael Brockers over I, Sue, I said that's not you what I said. See now you, you did. Now y'all you haven't I did not. had. I said, you're, you're lying. You it depends what I'm asking him to do. It depends today. what I'm asking him to do. Go get you a cup of cider. <laughs> I have not. I bought two boxes though, man. I got two boxes on top. You haven't had your cup of cider. I know because you're, you're tripping, big I'm time not, tripping. Not, yeah, yeah, all right, all right. What are you drinking, Brad? That's what I need to ask right now. What do you guys? That's that a little. That's some Dunkin' Donuts French vanilla coffee. And then I got some good old H2O. Oh, you're drinking two drinks? Well, yeah, I like... I, you got to keep the water in the system, baby. You got to keep okay. H2O in your system. You know what I'm saying? And then that's about it. You know what I mean? I got my chapstick here. Yeah. Only thing I'm missing is my Zen. But besides that, I'm good. All right. Sounds good. Now, I need to show you this offensive line thing, though. Show me, cause you're tripping. Let's ch let's change why, subject. Why, I don't understand let's why always it. gets to be tripping, Red. I don't feel like I'm let, tripping. I feel like you I'm are, y'all. I Check think the I'm coming out. I'm, let's see what the, the comments, comments can say. What the comments want to say, Red? I'm no. just telling you the facts. I'm sitting here telling the we people. We are here facts. for the people. Situationally, we appreciate the chat. I want to know reading what the all chat of it. is saying. I'm, I'm reading all of the chat. I'm I see John. I see Steve. All I'm saying is situationally, Rockers are low key buns. Yes, Red. That's not true. That's not true. Hold on. My Rockers ain't low key buns, dog. What are we talking about? Hey, but here's what I will say. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. My comment on Sue. This Red, me and you, people would ask us. People asked us, should we move on from Sue? You remember when people were asking us that? I mean, not Sue. Uh, Brockers. It's very good thing we still have Brockers on this roster at this point. Am I right or am I wrong? Yeah, right? It's still a good thing Matt's we have this dude on this roster. Yes, I'm not. I, I never said it wasn't. Never I'm just said saying, it wasn't. That's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is there's Sue certain is spots where I'd rather have rock with marshmallows. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm, listening. Go, I'm listening. Let's go, I'm listening. Let's go to the offensive line. Let's go to the offensive line. Let's roll. <laughs> Rat, a, a hundred, hundred, hundred K facts. A hundred percent. Hundred thousand percent facts. Sue, Sue, Sue. Okay, y'all crazy. <laughs> Oh, they're gonna okay. shout out to Panda. What pass? See, You're tripping. What, Thank you, Panda. This is what Rad does. You're Rad changed Rad be changing the argument on me. And all of a sudden I look like I'm tripping. Argument. Like I like I said here made some kind of bold statement. Like I came on and I was like, look, Brockers is better than Sue all time. I didn't even say that, Rad. What are we talking okay. here? All I said you was there's certain that. spots where I'd rather have Brockers than Sue. And I'm saying never. Okay. But well, there we go then. Let's all right, let's take a look at this offense line, because I need to show you this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't change the subject or the topic. I, I feel saying. like you try to you try to like make your own title out of that. That's crazy, Red. You should be a journalist. That's wild, Red. That's wild. Okay. Anyway, let's... Brockers, like it's facts. But we can. We uh, can here are the <laughs> offensive line. I would like. Rankings. I would honestly. I would honestly like to pause so okay. you can go get you some cider. I I don't want. I need your. Cider. I need. I need your head right. I'm really enjoying your, this. Cream. Your head's not right. That's cold. Oh, what flavor is that? This is orange Ooh. and cream. Right? Tastes like yeah. an orange sickle, huh? Mm hmm. This is next level. Yeah. I got the key lime over here, but what I realized, you know, when you're like recovering from being sick, oh, warm drinks mm -hmm. are disgusting. Like, you can't drink room temperature drinks, man. I got to have them cold. I usually don't put these in the fridge. I start putting them in the fridge because that's like a cold, man. Just hits different. Otherwise, this kind of makes me sick, especially with all the bubblies, bubbles in them and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, I want to show you this because this came out in the last 24 hours to rank the offensive lines. You know, PFF does these before the season. And man, okay. they, Brad, I need to know what you think. We're going to scroll down this, okay? What, predict, where do you think the lines are on this? I must say number nine. Number nine, okay. Okay. So they broke it in. Have you already, you've already looked at this. I have already looked at this. Minor broke, no weaknesses. Yes, we're in tier, I feel like tier. we're in tier one. We should be in first. We're in tier one or tier two. I'll say this. The first tier is about five teams. The second tier is like low ceiling, high upside. I mean, not low ceiling, low floor, high upside. I think that's probably where we're falling. Okay. So number one, they got Philadelphia. Yeah, they got some names over there. Philadelphia's had a good old line for a while. Then, of course, they got Cleveland. Uh, can you see this? Let me actually put those to the side while we – oop, there we go. Until I show it. And here we go, right? We got number three. We got the Lions. They got us at number three, man. Number Ooh. three. Ooh, the facial reaction there. Okay, I see. Rad, how do you feel about that? You see that? Bam, initial reaction. Lions at three. I I could. I'm not mad at that. I think that's where we can be. As long as everybody 
gels as a unit and stays healthy. Yeah, bro. I mean, we got three. We have three first rounders on that offensive line. Uh, all pro center, which to me, I'm going to be real. Y'all can call me crazy. But the center position, I think, is the most important position along the offensive line. That's the quarterback of the offensive line. So if you got a good center, he can set the tone for the rest of your offensive line. So I agree with that. And we have an all pro center. And then we have a, I'm going to say, a above average to good left tackle in Taylor Decker. Why are you smiling? I'm just reading the chat. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonah Jackson's a solid left guard. Big V is playing solid. I just don't like Big V's contract. If he was a little cheaper, I would be like, oh, I would want to re-sign Big V. Yeah. And then we have a top 10 right tackle, a young young gunner, who they said then came back even stronger, who's going into a sophomore year. Like, yeah, bro. Like, I'm going to agree with that 100%. We have a... A top tier offensive line, and I like how we're in that top tier category. We got Frank the Tank setting the tone because mm. the center is the most position, best, uh, most important <laughs> position along the offensive line. It is, right. man. A lot of people no, 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 yeah. like your left tackle and things like that. You don't understand what the center job is, bro. He sets the line, he sets the tone. And then we got two solid guards, and I feel like our we have two really good tackles. So I'm gonna agree, bro. We have a very talented, athletic offensive line. I love it. I love it. Now, if we can keep all of them healthy, we gravy, baby. Let's establish that run game and protect your boy, number 16. Absolutely. I'm going to read what they said about the Lions. They had a little thing here. They said uh, with three first-rounders, a third-rounder. Three first-rounders. Dang, okay. That's what I just said. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. I did say, say that. When you said it, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Were you, were I you not it. listening? I, I did. It's just like when you You're see the words – you're, you're like, what? Me. I'm not mad. You must mad, be man. mad at me. No. Nah. Are you mad at me? You know I'm not mad, Red. I know you're not. I'm talking Look. about you. Hey, what? <laughs> I was looking at the intro. I'm excited to do our predictions this year. Because I am like, I forgot I said 9 and 8. So, you know, anyway. Anyway, it says a third rounder, highly paid free agent. You hit on all that. Lions look like they are primed to recoup big time on their investments in 2022. They not only have high end talent in Frank Ragnall and Penny Sewell who can be both be top five players at their respected respective positions but they also don't have any glaring holes Big V was the unit's lowest rated starter last season and he still earned a 68.4 mark which I think is like above average or good it's something in there I don't know point is we all know starting off it's fine but I think one thing that they hit on which is huge because they do rank these I think they rank them like at a midway point and then they do after the season but as they just list the starters, they do still rank this as backups come in. And I think the big part here was when they said there's really no holes. There's no glaring holes. Because of the, you hit on all the off, starting offense linemen, right? We got dogs there. We not only have good, solid pieces, but we also have the Frank Ragnows, who's maybe the best at his spot. There's Penny Sewells, who's a game changer when you run that way, who's also flexible now. And Taylor Decker, who's super quick. But then you have the Evan Browns, Rad. I think the Evan Browns just set this over Solid top. We should backup. be ranked number one, Rad. We got Evan oh, Brown. Man. We paid a backup center. That's legendary. We got Tommy Kramer. We got Logan Stenberg. We got two good backup guards. Only one of them is probably going to make the team. As we know, the backup tackles. You're question. really geeked about Evan Brown. <laughs> you know, I am. I'm very. I was He's good. good. He's solid. We got Evan Brown. <laughs> I'm like, I wish you had that much energy when Dang. I brought up Sue's name. Dang. What? <laughs> if so we Evan brought Brown, back like, Sue, I would be hyped. You know this. You know I, this. I like. I like Evan Brown. He is a very solid backup. He proved that last year. That is that a he dog. Can come in Evan Brown. Face someone yes. gets hurt. I would like him. I wish he was repping. A guard a little bit because I'm not as excited with with, with Stenberg and and Whoa. Kramer. Like I mean, you was kind of pumped up right there. You made me seem like these these boys could be starters. Like hey, they're the pretty good now. Took. They're pretty good now. I thought Logan they're, Stafford was balling in the preseason. Tommy Kramer showed that he could play right guard and left guard. I mean, when you're going against third stringers, like I nah, we saw him start ball. last year, Rev. Right? You know what? He's he's year. cool, bro. He's cool. Yeah. He's cool. I, Evan Brown's the one I would I would, I would say like okay, that's, we got a solid backup center, and we that's need some guard out of him. I would think I would like to see him at guard. That's what I would like to do. But for for the start for the backup as a backup guard, 
I would yeah, I want to see him okay. repping some guard. Okay, okay, no, I get that. Yeah, yeah, and then, uh, but yeah, no, that's the big one though because we do have, as you said, the most important position. Who played a lot of games last year, so it's not projected what he's going to be. We know what he is. I'm, I want to give Frank Ragnall back, man. I was watching uh, the Chicago game, and we had the bad snap, dude. We got to the, we got inside the ten yard line. Our first three drives and had like zero points. It was horrible. But at the same time, when we have Frank Ragno, man, that center in the pocket, I thought when we passed the football and every time play broke down, he was able to step up in the pocket, move, and Frank Ragno just kept pushing his guy out of the play. And you could step up in the pocket. That was a different element. Go back to week one, San Fran. When he steps up and hits Khalif Raymond, when we're trying to come back, he pulls right behind Frank Ragno. He puts all that pressure on Frank Ragno to hold his and not get pushed because he get bulldozed back, he's running, he's running golf over. So he'll be a huge get back for us. But that mm-hmm. addition was huge to get Evan Brown back, especially if, like you're saying, he could play some backup guard. He may not have to because, you know, one of those guys will probably make a team. But then his backup tackle. I mean, we know what Matt Nelson is, his sixth offensive lineman. But I don't want to act like Matt Nelson can't get better. I don't no, want to hate Matt too Nelson much. Garbage. He could get better. He could get better, you know. I mean, he wasn't good last good. year, but, you know. He's garbage. Yeah, he was garbage last year. But I'm not saying he can't get better, Red. He could get better, you know. Now, am I optimistic that he will? No, not really. But with that said, he Dow has competition in Obina Eze. Some sort of competition because of the guarantees we put on him. Now, it would have been better yeah, competition yeah, yeah. to draft somebody, but it still is competition, right? I mean, because last year he had uh, zero competition for that spot. Will Holden, no. The guy was stuck at one spot, was not good, it was bad. He now at least has some legitimate competition for backup tackle, I think. Because you know that the backup set, you know Evan Brown's making it, and I think you know one of the backup guards are making it. So unless the Lions are saying we're keeping nine linemen, you have to fight for that last spot, and the Lions need it to be a tackle. So it's either you or it's the guy that we gave guaranteed money to. So to me, that's at least some competition. They need to cut Matt Nelson. I don't know why we even brought him back. And I would take that money and spend it on a proven veteran that I know can play some decent NFL snaps and Riley Reef or Eric Fisher. I would go get an old veteran just to plug him, plug to be a swing tackle to hold us down. I have no faith in Matt Nelson. If Lord, I don't even I don't even want to speak it into existence, but let's just say one of our tackles goes down again and we gotta depend on Matt Nelson, bro. We're toast. Yeah, that's gonna be tough. Exactly. So but you're but not about to sit here. That Matt Nelson should get I, no love. You, he no, proved hey. last year he's buns. Look. We need to go get Riley Reef or Eric Fisher, somebody who has NFL starting snaps. I don't care about your age. I just mm. need you to be our third guy just in case somebody gets hurt. Then you got to start until they get back. Because Matt Nelson, it was a night and day difference when we got Ash. Taylor Decker back Ash. and got Matt Nelson off. Like, Nelson is buns. I don't know why they brought the kid back. He's terrible. You know, Rad. I'm not getting. I'm not. I'm never gonna get behind Matt Nelson. Never. No, I don't. I, I think he should be the. He should be on that first wave of cuts once <laughs> Hard Knocks hits. A hundred percent. He was buns. I don't care and about a screen Skipper. tackle position that too. That's still some competition. Because he was hurt I, last look, year and he he was our backup tackle. So let me not forget about him. Go get Red, a white you know bet. Hey, you know I agree with you, Rad, because. I mean, you know, I agree with you. Know, I, you I know you do. I know you agree. Here. I know you agree. Matt Nelson's buns. We both agree that. But when we did our, I don't even season, like. I don't even like being comfortable saying that he's a part of the organization. The dude is terrible. No, I mean, I feel you there. I do. And then the issue also on top of that is, do I feel like there's flexibility for him to legitimately play left tackle? No, I don't. So I'm even I'm concerned about that too. That's why I got I'm getting some optimism about Eze knowing that he took reps at right tackle because the guy's literally never done it. And if we're talking backup swing tackles, we like Reefs because we know we can play both. You know, we want these guys to play both spots. I was all over the Cornelius Lucas train for the same reason you are. I was like, I wanted to back up tackle, and I still wouldn't be mad at doing that. But hearing that Eze's playing both spots does give me some optimism because it's like, all right, he's he's learning both, and we need yeah. someone that can do that because I I don't want to keep moving Penny Sewell. I don't know about you. I, I get that he can right. do it, and that's cool, but I don't like moving him every – all the time. So, uh, even in practice, why do we keep having to flip him around? Be a right tackle. Be really good at it. Okay, that's what you're going to be in the NFL unless we do something crazy and move on from Decker, which is probably not happening any near time in the future. So right. be great at right tackle. Stop moving him around. You keep having to move him every time Decker's not out there because he's dealing with stuff, and he's going to be in practice throughout this entire offseason. 
We keep having to flip him back to left tackle, and it's just like he's not working at right tackle. Flexibility is cool, but we need a guy that can play both spots, and that's what Eze is, is a backup left tackle. So as long as he can give you just a little bit of right tackle flexibility, because everybody's saying it, well, he was good because he could, you know, play sixth offensive lineman. I'm telling you what, Eze can play sixth offensive lineman. I believe in his skill set, there's no reason that he wouldn't have the same type of success Matt Nelson did. I mean, it's a positional blocking role. You position block, you get to the second level, you need to be a good athlete to keep under control. As they can do all that, you know? Right. It's just you're not handling, you're not responsible for it. we got to protect the corner, you know? we got to, hey, we got to block a defensive end. You're not getting those reps. So he should be good at that. That's what I'm trying to say. He should be good at that role. That's my mm -hmm. thoughts on it, though. We are ranked number three, Red, and I think we should like be ranked that. number one. That's all I'm saying. I like this. I mean, mm. they starting to show us some love, man. They are. They're starting yeah. to show us some love, and I like it. I like it a lot. It's about time. It's about yeah, time. These, these people ask about um, I'm, I'm ready Crosby. for Matt Nelson to get cut. Crosby, I'm cool on Crosby, bro. I, I, I really want to go get somebody who's got some. Crosby does have some starting NFL snaps. He started some games for us, but go get a veteran, bro. Like, I'm telling you, I, like a Riley Reef. I think we could get him for cheap, or Eric Fisher. Just go get an old head. It's not like I'm trying to build the future with this guy. I just need you just in case knock on that Decker or Penne goes down. We at least got somebody who's got some NFL snaps underneath them. Like, yeah. Who's played at a decent level because we know what we are getting from Matt Nelson. Like, I'm sorry. Well, I'll say this. It's, it's not what I want. We No, I don't either. And we, well, we found Evan Brown last year. You know, who didn't have much experience before he got here, and he did really well. And I do believe that as a film, like, you, that dude can play tackle now. You know, how fast he picked it up for college and just coming over here, he's just such a good athlete. Like, he could play back. I, I, I really do believe he'll win the backup tackle role this year. And as long as they allow him to get reps to show that he can play sixth offensive lineman in some of those sets, whether that's preseason or whatever, and he can hold that down, that's the only thing that would separate him from Matt Nelson. I mean, what, what else would separate you based on what we saw last year? For making the roster is Matt Nelson's good on as a sixth offensive lineman. As they can hold that down, as long as he shows that he can do that, he I think he makes the team. You know he's on a three-year contract. Matt Nelson was I think an exclusive rights free agent that was brought back for another year, so he I think he'll make the team. And my man said I wish we could have drafted Zach Tom. Hey, that would have been beautiful too. Now you know what I'm saying? Right, right, like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Let me show you this little clip because I know you're gonna like this. I found this. This is kind of old. Uh, I don't, I don't. Let me see it. I, I'll kind of just play it in the background. So this was uh, – he's a former offensive lineman. You've heard his voice before. The Brian – what's his name? Brian ba Baldinger? You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay, I found this clip on this. Excited for the Lions. This and, uh, you know, he's breaking it down. He's breaking it down. So. Right now it was healthy. But A. Sewell left tackle. All right, let's just watch the guys go to work right now. <laughs> Sewell with the power this dude. Here it comes. Uh, he moves bodies. Ragnall on the pull, all right? Kicks out the outside linebacker. TJ cleaning up on Al Shahir, and there goes DeAndre Swift. Look at your boy TJ, right. Red. Everybody have a involved in the run game. Can you rewind it really quick? Can you rewind that? Rewind that? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You going to break down, Hawkinson? No, I'm going to break. I'm going to break down. I'm going to break down that guy at the top of the screen, number 67. Ah. Okay, you didn't have to do me. You didn't do him like that. Did, did could, nothing. We could have just moved on to the next clip. Keep it playing. <laughs> he wasn't even part of the clip, Brad. That's crazy. Look at Big V. He though. was. I'm like, I mean, I he's Big a part of that offensive line. Look at him open. I just his, want to see if he made his block. See you? I guess he made his block. He made the linebacker go a different route, but. <laughs> no, that was set up beautifully. Oh, Matt Nelson's on. They lucky they're not focusing on that left side of the screen. That was a good cut oh, by Swift, see, though. Yeah. I feel like that was yeah, just a heck of a cut. That was a great play. I think he picked up a third down there. Mm. Ran him over. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. Mick Swift, though. Just stay healthy, baby. Stay healthy. That's facts, man. Let me... I mean, we can just kind of do there, See, there's Matt Nelson. This is what I'm saying. Eze could do this. He could do this. He can, he can get that position. Doesn't need to run him over as a linebacker. Just get in position there. And then look at look at we see Hawkinson working. Ooh, Swift stop. That was Swift's best game, Red. I don't know. I thought Pittsburgh was his best game. I love when we wear those all whites. The all whites are amazing. Oh, the all whites are fire, Red. I was watching the Green Bay game. Ooh, those things are clean. Yeah, I forgot that mm -hmm. turned off the steam. Let me get a block. Like this is gonna be an exciting lineup. 
I, they got speed on the outside. They got power on the inside. They can protect the quarterback. Like, this is going to be a good group. They got great players everywhere. TJ, Ragnow, Sewell, Decker, like Halapala, uh, Big V at right guard. <laughs> he you name it. I like that. Halapala. Put it all together. They got a chance. Halapala. And the only thing I would say to this, two things need to be better, Rev. My thoughts. My quick thoughts on the line. Flags. Sewell had a couple of those, especially early in the year. He had a couple of flags. I was like, oh, man, he'll, he'll get better. Again, that's really why great. I want to keep him at right that. tackle. Because I got to think, okay. like, false starts, delay of – like, just when you – I got to think it's just being comfortable playing that position because the timing's jacked up when he keeps going back and forth, especially early in the year because you kept sticking at left tackle and he was practicing at right tackle. So that – is one is the, the the blocking you know um, the flags and we see it with holding and false starts and you know, the same thing with Hawkinson. That's my biggest thing with it is that for the young players, it's all about the flags. We have to avoid getting those and then sticking with it. There were times I thought Decker last year where you know he's he's a heck of an athlete and he has to really be a great. See, my, I'm a little bit concerned now here, Rab. Not concerned as much as how long does Taylor Decker continue to be a really good tackle in the NFL. Because he doesn't win with his size, positioning. He wins with his incredible athleticism. And I'm just saying, like, you know, how long does that last that tackle in the NFL? Right. But they sometimes they don't stick with the play. And that's the only thing I would say. Like, they'll run as, you know, they'll run a draw, play gets away from him, they'll stop. And then it's like, oh, he cut back. And with Swift, we know one thing with Swift is that he is, unlike the other running backs, he's not going to hit the hole sometimes to just go. He will bounce, 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 bounce. And it's like, if you don't keep with your block, he's going to run right back into your guy. I thought he gave up right. the first down in Cleveland because Decker stopped blocking on a draw. Real quick. I'll, I'm, 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 I'm. So you you think we got the 21st ranked wide receiving core? Whoa, is that what PFF said? 21st. Whoa, where did you find that at, Rad? 21st. Man, I, mean, I didn't see that. I mean, I didn't see that. We have to PFF. They said we got the twenty-first ranked offense. I mean, wide receiving court. Good lord, twenty-first. I got. It doesn't make sense though. I feel like it's understandable. They got Patriots ahead of us. The Chiefs don't got Tyreek Hill, and they still up there like that. I'm not going. I got Juju now. I think the only so? thing is okay. Now you can read the description in a second, but I'm gonna assume. That part of it's because DJ Chark, they're going to say he's unproven because he hasn't been healthy, which has been a huge part of it. He's only played in a couple games. And then, of course, you got J-Mo, and we don't know if he's going to be there week one. So that's the only thing is your top two have been a little bit on and off in terms of getting on the field. But I know we like it because we understand the depth that we have and that these, these dudes are legit. These dudes, When the big moment comes up, Cephas steps up. You saw it in Green Bay. You saw it in San Fran. Cephas rise to the occasion. Hey, don't talk about Trinity Benson now, Rand. Oh, snap. Uh-oh. Oh, uh, hey, your boy uh, is a dog. That's what I'm going to say, Rand. He might make the team. What, what did PFF say? I don't care what PFF says. I know, but you pulled up the ranks. So I'm just asking if they had a little description there. They just said we have. I'll tell you. I mean, it's nothing. <laughs> I don't agree with it. Okay. This receiving core is on the rise. The Lions have two solid pieces returning from last season in TJ Hawkinson, Amara St. Brown, and also added a few more options in the draft from free agency, specifically players who could stretch the field. DJ Chark brings a unique combination of size and speed, being 6'4 and running a 4 3 40. And Jameson Williams' impact can be seen in his production against a seemingly infallible Georgia defense last year. That infusion of speed was necessary for the Lions' offense that ranked dead last an average depth of target in 2021, which is 6.8 yards, because Jared Goff is scared to push the ball downfield. By adding these two <laughs> offense outside right. receivers should allow him to move the ball a little bit more downfield. But everybody is still unproven. This is why they are ranked where they are ranked. Did it say all of that? I yeah. know it didn't say the part that put about Goff in there. But the ending yeah. part, did it really say that? That's why they're ranked at 21 because it's unproven? Is it unproven? Is it unproven though, Red? I want to ask you because we have Cephas and we have Josh Reynolds. Is not unproven. Dead last in average depth of target in 2021. Okay. Six point eight because of Jared Goff was scared to push the ball. That's downfield. not what it says. <laughs> it doesn't say that. With, with the addition of these two that. outside receivers, that should improve that number. All right, all right. It don't say that. All right. <laughs> with us being dead last because Jared Goff was scared to push the ball downfield. 
with the addition of these two outside receivers, that number should change. Right, well, the description just got different, it sounds like, so. No, I'm reading what it said. I'm reading what it said, bro. <laughs> All I can do is read what it says, okay? You know, Do Doan Knight, and he had six penalties last year in 12 games. That's an issue. So, so it needs to be better. I'm, you can't be mad at me because I'm reading what you asked me to read. So Okay. I mean, you just, you just, it's just when you add your little flavor to it. I don't think you chose the right flavor. <laughs> Any flavor. <laughs> that was, flavor. I'm reading. Okay, oh, share it then, Brad. The screen. Now you I am not in the mood. In I am not in the mood to share anything, okay? I'm stingy. I'm not sharing. You just you okay? just added some flavor to that. To I did that, not uh, add any flavor, bro. bro. I'm at look. Brad, I've seen your titles. I know you you you'll get a little creative at, with it. At the end of the day, <laughs> I'm you know what's crazy? Hey, let me just say this, told, Brad. Let me just say this. <laughs> the disrespect. I was watching uh Chicago, and it's what, like they, keep it real. Man, when people be like, man, he can't create. Like, stop. You know, I don't know why our videos always turn into this, Brad, but they, they have to. Ooh, Jared Goff can't create. I've Thompson watched can't. two plays Jared on the same create, drive man. where he's duking. He had a 16-yard run stop. in that game, by the way, stop. against Green Bay. He's a eh, he's little you ready to see what the juke. Bam, bro, you to know. your boy. He created a, a, a shot for your boy, Quintus Cephas, two times. Two times. Avoiding the pressure. The one time it came out like a very ugly. It was a very big duck. He's not but an improviser. Outside the pocket, you know little off, uh, and then he came back with the with the juke you know juke. That. Found Cephas. Come on, man. It's, <laughs> it's just crazy. Juke. to me. Just, Girl, you know he's <laughs> not an improviser. I'm not about to sit up and argue with you about that. Uh, we don't need to argue about it. I'm just saying. I just I I hear the noise. I hear the blasphemy, and it's just like when I find an example that's a complete opposite of what the people is saying. I'm just like, what are you talking about? Come on, man. It's crazy. Anyway. No, this was good. This was a good show, Red. This is fun. We always have good shows. I mean, like, that's good. I mean, duh. You was a little, you know, you wasn't on your, you weren't thinking straight because you didn't have your cider. We're not going to bring that back up. And then mm. I just, the, the whole show, you really wasn't thinking that straight. Offensive line, I think you were pretty spot on. But when we were talking D tackles, mm, I just feel like the conversation. Just, 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 just this last little bit about. That was facts. Our quarterback's an improviser. I could show you the plays if you want to see the quarterback's plays. Quarterback's an improviser. Our you know, quarterback do. I just, is I'm just a creator. He's a, he's You're not speaking facts, creator. bro. He's not a creator. I'm just or telling you what happened. I saw the plays, right? I saw my eyes, and I know you saw them so, too, because that's your boy Quintet. How many snaps? So if, if golf, let's say golf played a thousand snaps last year, he improvised maybe three of them. <laughs> I'm no mathematician, but that's three percent. Okay, you know what? Let's just end it here because I'm not sure what's happening anymore. Um, even less than three percent. Sorry. <laughs> like, yeah, no, you said a thousand. Know. It's like point. Yeah, no, I thought I said a hundred. It's like he's garbage. He's not even. No, it's just a made-up stat. See, look, someone's gonna, you're, just, someone's gonna tag that. And be look, like, look, Goff it. only had three improvisers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, bro. Like hey. you made, it, like, I use like I got the plays. Like okay, you're gonna show I me can, I can show two to plays. three plays out of the whole season. No, I'm showing you in one game, right? That's what I'm showing you, Red. That's what that's where it's bro, wild to me. It's crazy. And then people have the the, the they say the audacity to, to tell me about the Super Bowl game. Like they, we gotta stop scoreboard. All I say is we gotta stop box score watching. That's it. And I know you don't. I'm just saying the outside looking in. The outside of the Lions fans need to stop box score watching. That's all I'll say. Cause it's wrong. How we doing? He's 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 cool. He's a cool quarterback, man. I'm. You know what? This is this is gonna let us know a lot of a lot about Jared Goff because this is his make or break year, mm. and a lot of fans this year. A lot of us is gonna either we gonna either gonna ride with Goff, or we yeah. gonna get rid of Goff. This is the year. So I mean, I'm excited to see how he. I'm excited. Yeah. Performs is he gonna stand up or is he gonna fold? Cause, Ooh. like this is the year we either gonna jump on board with Jared Goff or, hey, it's well, time to move on. I will throw you guys one of them ropes with the little orange things on it. You don't. What's the little orange thing? Do you know the orange things? Like, Here you go, Brad. I'll try to throw it out there before Week One kicks off. And if you grab it, it's a great decision. Cause up I'm here, with Jared Goff. I'm with him. I gotta these. be with him. We got a whole I bunch of these up here, Brad. And you know, I'm with him. And then we followed up with one of these. And for everybody that's sitting there, they don't get one of these. 
Hey, that's, hey all I can do is throw the I'm with thing, him. man. It's He's all... our quarterback. I got to be with him right now. But this is it right here, bro. I saw a whole bunch of your shirts. They had a whole bunch of your shirts. Shout out to Lions Nation. They had a whole bunch of your shirts that said, uh, in golf will we trust. There's a ton of those shirts there. It's like, all right, I see you, at. I mean, we got to. A nice little they had a big box of your shirts sitting there. We gotta, we gotta trust Goffle. Get one of those like, shirts. It's our quarterback. I, mean, I won't. But you can. Why? We trust them. Are you? I know. Goffle, I agree. We trust. Yeah, yeah. I just. Yeah. Okay. All right, Reg. Well, hey, wait. I need. I need. I need some words of wisdom for you, for you on the way out. Because I got um, some. I, yes. You got some. Go. Go. No, no I go. don't have the words of wisdom. I need you. I don't to have, have any words either. of wisdom. I don't have any either. Go. Yeah, I can see you thinking. Hey, let him know. Go ahead. Let him know. Right. Give it to him. Chat. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when it's cold outside, wear a jacket. When it's hot outside, drink water. Always stay positive and keep hope alive. Ooh, I, I don't know. That was off the dome. Okay. I guess the show is not ending. He just threw it. Neon background, Max. I don't even know what that is. He's tripping. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.